Hello, good morning. Welcome to New Forest Morphs. It's Monday morning. I'm back from my holiday. And Jared, how has it been since I've been away? How did you get on without my uh, presence here? Yeah, it was fine. A bit more cleaning than normal, but... Good. Well, it's lovely. I've come back to a nice clean facility. I think the new fresh air that we've got on the new uh, electrical uh, fans are working well, Jared. Uh, I've adjusted the lower um, fans to level four because I think we wanted more fresh air coming in. We had it at level three, so that was twigging it. But today we're um, going to give you an update on how this little fella's getting. This is Harry's snake that uh, is feeding well, Jared. You've been feeding since I've been gone. Yeah, he's on fluffs. He's on fluffs and he's growing nicely. He's got a good size to him. And he looks very pretty, Jared. Isn't he beautiful? Orange dream banana. And he feels really muscular and strong. And his feeding instincts are really good, Jared. Yeah, he's pretty quick. I open the tub and he smashes it. Yeah. So that's lovely. We've got half-term holidays coming soon with a few families visiting us. So we're just getting ready and preparing. And Jared, the um, vivarian came last week and you built, built it up. Mm -hmm. so, I was got, so I've got some video footage of you building it, which we can share. So it came as a flat pack, didn't it, Jared? Yeah, it comes flat pack. Yeah, but that's going to be his new home. It's actually up there as the finished article. Well, not quite finished. There's some things that we need to do. Yeah, the glass is on top, but yeah. just so there's no reflection. We've taken it out for now. Have a little look We're just inside. waiting for the thermostat to come. Yeah. And then we can put the thermostat in with all of the cocoa, and then it should be finished and yeah. ready to go. Let's see whether this guy likes the look of it. <laughs> It's got two hides, so you've got two hides in there. Mm -hmm. It's got some climbing space, so you've got the vines in there. And he's got a cool spot and a warm spot. The heat mat's inside. Yeah, that'll be here. That's all in there. And then he's got the water bowl in the middle. That looks like a nice deep water bowl, Jared. Yeah. Very pretty. And then he can climb up here if he wants. Do some exploring. Can let him explore. There you go. Let's see whether he wants to explore his new area. There we go. Obviously we're going to put some cocoa husk in, but I think you'll love that, Jad. You've got the two air vents at the back. The vents are all in. Yep, all good. And uh, how long did it take you to construct? Not too long, maybe 20 minutes, 30 20, minutes. 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Then look, he's climbing up. He's enjoying that. And he's got plenty to hold on to. Um, now the reason why there's no lighting here, Jad, is because bull pythons don't like lighting in their homes, do they? No. So, but you can still enjoy them and you can always shine an external light that we've got external lights shining on here. So if we were to lighten up, put the spotlights on them, you can put spotlights on them like that and enjoy them more. But I think he's quite enjoying it, the, uh, the experience, climbing on the vines and exploring his new territory. So I think that's lovely. And you can see they do like to climb. And he's just Never exploring had this much it. height. Yeah. So it's I a good it's size lovely. view for a little male. Yeah, and you've got the windows that, at the top and they just slot in yeah, here. Yeah, they slide in so they're all runners. Deep, so they're on the runners. You've got deep runners and then shallow so you slide them up into the top and then drop them in. Yeah, that's really good and we'll put those in once we get the um, thermostat and the cocoa husk in there. So Harry, I hope you like your new little setup and then you can dress it and adjust it to your spec. Yeah. Uh, but at least it gives, gives the snake a great opportunity to enjoy uh, a larger enclosure say the two hides he'll use the one on the hot spot for sure he may decide to use the one on the cool spot i think that's a nice little setup jared so yeah well done so what we'll do is we will just put him back now but i think he's enjoyed being in there he's wrapped his tail around the vine jared so they love all that one i think he's going to be very very happy do you like your new home buddy so harry's going to obviously name the snake but i think he's beautiful jared so we'll slip him back, he's doing really well. And uh, what we'll do is we'll get the whole thing set up with all the heat mats working correctly once the thermostat comes and we'll make sure he gets acclimatized to his new environment. And then when Harry comes, he can pick up his snake and viv and it's a plug and go effectively. So we'll make sure he makes a good transition into there. So what I did, Jared, while you were building, I did some video footage of the build. So. Why don't we just share a few of the steps? So if somebody else wants to set up a Viv for the first time, um, it will be quite uh, straightforward, Jared. And are you going to show the glass panels how they work? Yeah. Yeah. So they slide in the top here. Yeah. There. And then they drop in to the runners below. Okay. Like that. Lovely. 
And again, it'll be the same on this side too. Yeah. And you've got some tongs. We bought some tongs for feeding. And there. Set in. Uh, Lovely. And you can get locks as well, can't you? You can get a little lock that goes in here. Yeah. It might be worth getting a lock there, Jared, so that he can then secure everything. Because snakes are notorious for kind of sliding open things. Yeah. It's probably so worth getting a little lock or something. So you can get a little lock that goes in there, can't you, Jared? That might yeah. be a good move to do. But I do like the black. I do like the way it looks. Right, we'll put yeah, the lights nice. back on uh, on me, <laughs> on the spot lamp. <laughs> Our little studio lights. <laughs> and then we'll have a little look and see. There we go. We'll see the the build now. So, just bring them onto here. Lovely. Right, let me just show you a few videos of how Jared built it. And just, there we go, Jared. stages and over here you've got the air vents on there and you've got a mallet to, uh, Just to tap, in tap it house. in and there's a box of other goodies over there but we'll show you how it's going at each stage. Yeah. Okay. Right Jared, so now you're working on the back so they've got some little air holes here Jared mm -hmm. and they just clip in the vents. So they're your vents and that'll go on the back. in the back there. Right. First thing that we need to do is to put these, each of these in. Right, okay. So what these do is these lock in the metal dowels. I see, yeah. It's all clever stuff. Okay, Jared's got the, the back on. See the vents? He's also got the heat mat Jared, so why are you putting the heat mat on now at this stage? So before I lock it all in place, you see there's these little cutouts here? Yeah. To save me having to cut the heat mat and rewire, all we have to do... Oh I see, so it stops you from having to rewire the heat mat. So you just slip it underneath. Got you. Okay. The heat mat will set up. Nice, Jared. Place. So the heat mat will go inside the vivarium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. And it will go in that place I there. Right. Yeah, stuck in there. Yeah. Straight on top. It should look good. Okay. Yeah, I think there's one last one. Alright, Jared, you're making good progress. Just talk yeah. us through how far we've got now. We're about two thirds of the way through. So, so what, take what I've done is I'll take the heat mat down here. Yeah. As you can see, so that won't come up. It won't affect the, yeah. the snakes. Yeah. Um, what we'll do is when the thermostat comes, we'll poke it through this hole. We'll tape it directly onto the heat mat. Yeah. So that then the temperature will be constant the whole way through. Right. I put the front tracks on. Yeah. What we have to do now is put the top on and the top tracks. Yeah. Slide the glass in. Yeah. And then decorate the inside. But excellent. That was looking so far. Well, that's coming on nicely. Well done, Jared. I think that's it, Jared. Oh, this is one more. So. All right, just putting in the glass. Like that. And you've got the runners. Just open. Slide in there. Yeah. Looks lovely, Jared. Heat mats in. So just waiting for the thermostat, and then we can put the cocoa husk in. Interesting. That's lovely, Jared. And you can always get a lock that goes in there if you want to keep it locked. Yeah. Sounds good. That no, looks really nice. Just give it a little dust down when it's all finished. Yeah. Should be good. Let me just come back a bit so you can see it. It's a nice little unit, isn't it? Yeah, it looks nice when it's finished. Nice. Right, that's it. So, uh, we're almost there, Harry. So thank you for your patience. And I think in the next few days, we should actually have the cocoa husk in there, Jared. And then we can uh, make sure all the temps are working correctly, that everything's secure. And then we can put the snake in there and actually uh, monitor its behavior, see how it, what it does. We can see which hide it's gonna use. And I think if we make the transition prior to the client picking up the snake, I think it will make the transition a lot easier for families picking up snakes with their pets. But I think I like the look of it, Jad. You talked about getting a couple yourself here. Yeah, I think they look quite good. Yeah. I think a couple up here on top of these racks would look nice. Yeah. Maybe with some different species in, we'll see. I think so. So I think overall, I think we're pleased with the result. Hopefully Harry's happy with it and he can adapt it to 
decorate it as he wishes. And the nice thing is that that snake can live in there comfortably at the as, as an uh, even as an adult because uh, I think the males probably you can keep them at seven eight hundred grams. Mm, if he gets big, I'll upgrade it. But yeah, if he does decide to get big, but I think at the end of the day, you can control the size of your ball python as well because if you feed your ball python every week, it's likely to build bigger unless you use smaller prey items, or you can actually feed them every two weeks as they get older. Baby hatchlings tend to get fed every week, don't they, Jared? That's what we yeah, do. Yeah, we feed them weekly. And how did you find the feeding last week, Jared? That's good. Not? Yeah. And the coca husk is working beautifully. Mm -hmm. We're still waiting for some coca husk to arrive for the adults, so I think you're going to follow up, and I think it's coming from Wild Racks. So Jared's going to follow up with them, see when that's coming, because uh, yesterday I did a two or three hour cleaning session, Jared, and I thought, it's so much harder work with paper than it is to coca husk because I've changed the, the paper and then the next day they wee on it and it ruins all the paper so yeah. it has to be cleaned virtually again and it gets one, one day's use out of it. But what I'm finding with the coca husk with spot cleaning, the bulk of the coca husk is fine and you just have to do the spot cleaning. So I think we're looking forward to moving that across. The other thing we've done is we've taken all the labels off last year's breeders and we've put on new labels on the new breeders and you can see there that Jazz bought some stickers and that will help us keep tabs. So we like to record the locks and the size of the follicles on each of them and you can see Koji, uh, the leopard double head DG pied Koji. You can see that we checked her follicles and they were coming in at 7 mil and that was on the 17th September and she locked, or was it a TT? Tail to tail. Tail to tail with the uh, DG pied boy. Yeah, you've got to change that, you put Koji. <laughs> Did I put Koji? Sorry, That's I should put a tattoo on there. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it's my uh, my mistake. Well done, Jav. So, talking of tattoo, here he is. We'll just bring him out and see how he's going. So, I think he does want to breed, Jav. You can see he's, he's curious to, to come out. A lot of the boys are actually having a little sniff around. But he's doing well. And uh, you can see that he is getting into good size. So, hopefully we'll keep building him and we'll use him on a couple of the girls. So I think the other idea, Jared, is we were talking about the Calico girl, and I saw a beautiful, um, I think it was a beautiful, exotic Calico, which was lovely, Jared. And I was thinking, when it comes to Pringle, she's our beautiful Calico girl. We were talking about putting banana spot nose, uh, not banana, banana pastel orange dream to her. But I think if you come and have a look, Chad, she might be really quite useful if we put the uh, the VPI Exantic Pied Boy might be an, an interesting option uh, to see how that would look in VPI Exantic. So that could be another option to consider. Um, and you mentioned that some of the babies have shed out as well, Chad. Yeah. Um, we've got a few, hopefully we're still waiting to hear the results on our shed tests. And I think we want to get going on the super gra well the gravel uh, clown project, Jad. And um, we're just gravel holding highways. yeah, we're just holding back because Bella looks really beautiful. If you have a look at Bella, she shed out this week. Sorry, past the highways, yeah. clowns. Yeah. What I meant, not gravel them. highways. Looking pretty good. They're nice and bulky. And have you noticed since we put the new clean air system in that the five of the colour of the snakes seems to have have improved a lot to the point where we are seeing more vibrance in the colour pattern of the snake and I think it's because the cleaner air jar must be um, helping a lot with, with the, uh, the welfare of the snakes and you mentioned that one of our spot nose girls shed out as well mm -hmm. have a look at these how are these babies transfer into the coconut husk jar? yeah really well yeah let's have a little look so she shed out and what is she taking at the moment Jared? she's on fluffs She's on flux. She was a picky eater to start with. She'd probably take weaners but though. She's now probably ready to move on to slightly bigger prey. This girl here is probably taking we uh Maltese. Maltese. For Thirty or forty gram Maltese. Wow, really good, Jared. So they're doing beautifully. So we're looking forward to seeing these projects develop. Just a little bit of shit in there. Yeah. So we'll take that out. Right, let's put these two girls back. And any other snakes, Jared, that are doing well. We're now starting to feed Maltese, larger Maltese to some of our other hatchlings. So let's have a little look and see on this side, Jared. See how these clowns are doing. This one just shut out here. So we pull out that one and have a look. Why don't we take it to the table, Jared? And, and this one I think is a gravel. Let's have a little look and see how it's looking. 
This one I think is a pastel lesser gravel clown. Okay. And why do you think that's a gravel, Jared? Gravel sort of makes it look a little bit dirty, a little yeah. bit brown. Yeah. And you can see that in the back here. Yeah. And look at the crazy patterns on its back as well. Really crazy. Um, so I think this one's got gravel in, but we've just got a shed out of her, so we're going to send that off. Or is it a boy? I think it's a girl. It's a we've girl. got a couple of girls, haven't we? So I think that looks beautiful, Jared. And let's hope that she does prove to have that gravel on your right. And that, are they enjoying the cocoa husk as well? Yeah, they're loving it. There's another one. You can see the difference. If you get out this one, um, spinning out these three. These are the three which could be gravel. Um, and they're all clowns as well. This one's in shed. Yeah. It's got a, a nice gravelly look to it, hasn't it? Yeah, I think this one looks more gravelly. Yeah. Because it's got the darker dorsal. Yeah. This one's a bit lighter, but I think I think they might both. If you look around the edge, though, there's all these gravelly looking marks to it, but they are different, aren't they? This one's got much more elongated teardrops to it. Yeah. This one, I wonder if that's got blade in it as well, Jared. If you look carefully, I wonder once whether some have got blade and some haven't got blade. They're very pretty snakes. They are. This one's definitely got gravel in. This is a lesser gravel clown. And why? And he's going into shed as well, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. And why would you say that, Jared? The, it's just completely different to a normal lesser clown. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we're hoping that we have hit some gravel clowns here. But we've got some potential gravel clowns from last season that we're hoping to prove out with a shed test. And uh, one of them is Monty, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one that you want to be a gravel. Yeah, it's another. It's a pastel lesser clown that we're hoping has gravel in. Yeah, just have a I little think look. It does he's very? He's got that brown. Yeah, it's like he's good. going into shed as well, is he? I'm not sure. Well, we're hoping that he is carrying the gravel. And our backup boy, in case he isn't, is Finn. Now. Let's have a look and see whether Finn is I think he's going into shed as well, or is he just shut up? Maybe it is his only thing, Yeah. So I, just, don't, I don't know about him if he's got it or not. Yeah. We'll have to see. We'll wait and see on that one. Okay. So what we'll do is I want to show the vibrance of the snakes to show you how well they are doing. Bruce is looking really beautiful. Look at the vibrance and his colours. You can see how all the colours are popping. So I think they're enjoying the cleaner air environment. And I'm glad that we invested in the new system, Jared, because we're working in a much better environment as well. He's almost like fluorescent, isn't he? Yeah, I'm more than the camera's picking that up, but it is, yeah. it's so beautiful. I mean, just look at them. You mentioned some of our other baby albinos look really pretty, Jared. Do you want to bring out some of those? And we can have a look at the babies that you were showing me this morning. Yeah. And you said that some of them have really nice patterns on them. Yeah, there's a couple down here. Um, maybe you can bring those to the table, Jack. And I'll put these on the back. Yeah, this one looks really cool. Put it in the line. So, is that one potentially leopard? Or just got a really funky pattern, hasn't it? Yeah. I like the look of it. Yeah, it's cool. It's really like faded as well. Like really gentle, soft colours. Yeah. But it's got like spots all down its back. Which might be the leopard. There's the lavender. See the difference between the lavender albino and the straightforward albino. This has got black in as well though, so. Yeah, but really pretty. Really, it's doing well. Yeah, this one's doing really Is well. Is that eating fluffs as well, Jared? This one took a multi. Did it? Yeah. Well, it looks really good. 30 gram multi. So that's doing really well. And the other black head uh, are growing as well. The black heads are doing yeah, well. One's in the deep shed right now and the other ones. This one hasn't eaten on its own yet. Right. I've assist fed it a few times. Yeah. But you can see compared to its sister. Yeah. And are you really giving pretty. him small multis? Little multis at the moment, it yeah. won't take anything else. So that's the male and that's the female. So we've got one male, one female. In fact, we've got two females. The other female's feeding, but she's, she's in a shed. shed. She's in shed at the moment. Yeah, she doesn't look very nice. I wonder whether he's worth having, I don't know whether it's worth trying him on a slightly larger prey item, do you think, or not? No. 
or just gently go yeah, gently just, with him? I've tried him with fluffs. I've tried assist feeding fluffs on him and he didn't take it. Didn't so. take it. So maybe just stay with what you've got. We might have to feed him every five days, maybe. Yeah. But um, I think it won't be long. Like it, it, he's already close to taking by himself. Yeah. Like all I have to do is put it in his mouth and he'll wrap around it. So. Okay. So he's very close. close. We'll stay with what, what we've got going I on. I think so. Yeah. And then we'll put that one back. Um, down at the bottom. That one goes down here. Okay. And then how's the blackhead? Double head boy doing jab, which is yeah, really well. This guy here, is he taking? He's feeding really well. He's on fluffs. Yeah. I love the black head. It's such a beautiful genetic, isn't it? Yeah. He's double head for clown and lavender, is he? Yeah. He's got a lovely, beautiful head stamp to him as well. So nice, Jack. Hello, buddy. Really nice. He's coming to say hi. Yeah. So we've also got some other snakes reserved for Mark and Callum, so we can give you an update on how they're doing. So let's just see how we're looking here, just put this boy back. We've got the two bongo head yeah, clown girls, one down here. how are they doing Joe? There's one up here isn't there? And this is the one for Callum. I think. So this is the one that Callum's going to have. Look, she wants to feed, look at her. They're really good at feeding, yeah. Are they good feeders? And what are they taking at the moment? They're fluffs. Yeah. So I started off slow, but yeah. So there you go. There's the two bongo heck clown girls. We're going to keep one for ourselves and yeah. then keep one and sell one to Mark and Callum. I think they're going to produce some beautiful bongo clowns in the future. So a lovely project. And then let's have a look and see how the exantic pie pie to doing, Joe. Look at that one. Right. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, first of all, let's have a look and see what we've got, Jad. So they're down here. They're down here. So we are, he's going to have a boy, he's which is this one here. here. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look and see how he's coming along. Oh, he looks chunky, Jad. Yeah, they're all feeling well. Have you got the scales? So we just weigh them and see what we yeah. I'll go and get those. If you do some videos, just a little look. He's a nice boy, this one. And he's eating, what's he eating at the moment? He's on fluffs. He's on fluffs. He'd probably take something bigger, but. Yeah. He's so let's just set moment. that up. I'm guessing he's what, 120? Yeah, he's going to be close to that, maybe yeah. more. Okay. 150. 150, even better. So I think he's doing really well. And yeah, he's, he's got a really good start. He's carrying the Exantic. So if I bring out his father, so you can see that he can produce some of these. The four is his dad, and four is a lovely, very pretty snake jar. And again, he's looking out for the ladies, but you can see just how beautiful he is. I'll put him on there, Jan, just have a look at him. So what this boy will do is he will produce some of these, but he'll have pastel. I think that they've got pastel in the well. Pastel, yeah. So they were bred to a super pastel. So they're pastel, so that will just enlighten the pastel. Now if I get out the other pastel exantic, I think, how do how the baby exantics doing, Jared? Yeah, good. Yeah? They're feeling well. And look, he wants to come and feed already. I can see. Yeah, he'll bite you if you put your hand in there. Honestly, he's getting beautiful, Jared. So, there's the VPI pastel exantic. So you've got the three snakes here. So you can see that when you add pastel to exantic, it really pops. And there you can see he's building up a good size. Yeah. And he's had three or four meals now. Yeah, I think he's had three. And when he sheds out, we'll be trying to find out if he's carrying the clown. So that could be our entry into the clown project. We haven't sexed him yet. Because he's kind of very bitey, isn't he? Yeah. So I'm not sure whether we've got a boy or girl there. But I think you can see how the exantics are beautiful, aren't they, Jared? Yeah, so you mix a lot of potential. The pastel into this one's nice. Yeah. He's also got quite a nice little tail pattern. Yeah, now 
what's the advantage of actually going for the VPI as opposed to the other Exantix Trad? No, uh, it's preference, isn't it? Yeah. Depends what you like. I think we like the VPI. It's quite a bright, a bright colour. Yeah. We find the TSK to be a bit more brown. Yeah. But I guess it depends where you get it from, and what what you mix in. A lot of it's to do with um, the original breeders, how they line breed yeah. to get the quality. And I think there's different intensities in many of the snakes. And if you get a high intensity, which I think we've been blessed to get a quality VPI in there. And then let's get out the female that uh, Mark and Cameron are going to pick up. And see how so she's doing. It's a double pet female. I don't remember which one it is. Oh, off, straight out. Oh, what good feeding responses. Have we got any, is it particularly um, late with it? I've got, I don't remember which one we said. I think they're it's both this very one. similar. They're both very similar. I'm just getting one out. Yeah. Really chunky jack, so that's all good. So I'll put that one back. Let's just weigh her and see how she's doing. I think it's the other one, which is for, for them. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's get the other one out. Here. Right, what weight have we got on her, Jared? This one's at 70 at the moment. Is that one at 70? So it may well be, it might be better if we sell this one yeah, instead. Yeah, the other then. one. Yeah. So let's, I think I prefer to sell them at over 100 grams, Jared. So I think that one's a little bit small to be sold. This is 120. That's 120. So I think this is probably the one that we will sell then, Jared. That will give Callum and Mark a head chance on the project. And then we'll just build this one up, I think. But, uh, Beautiful animals. So, um, let's just slip those ones back so they're all coming on nicely. And put that in there. Lovely. Okay, right, are there any other snakes? Now, you brought out the ultramel pieds that are doing really well. Mm -hmm. So, we bring those out and have a look and see how they're looking. Yeah, we need to move them up soon. Yeah, so I think this a bit one big. is your favourite charge. This one's my favourite one, yeah. Look, she's way, she's getting too big for this. She's absolutely gorgeous and she produces a, a low white pied version, Jared. Squiggles. Yeah. And you also mentioned we've got Mojave going into the project as well, which I forgot about. Starburst gave us some. She's 160, 165. So she's doing well. So we'll be moving her up shortly. And then we also have another female. Yes, yeah, these these this pattern under here is incredible. It's lovely, Joe. There might be something else going on that animal, because if you compare with this one, who's also getting chunky and feeding well, she's one forty-five. One forty-five. She doesn't have. She's the same. got more banding. Yeah, so more banding on that one. That one looks more vibrant as well. If you look at the colours, it's got a, a greater intensity. So I wonder whether there's some other genetic going on in there, Jared, because it looks brighter as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it's almost like this one's entry, but it's not. Yeah, I think they're both lovely. I think the yeah, they both hold they come bags. from really good stock, and I think the original father like I said he's a very high quality um, boy, and I think it adds to the quality of the genetics. So yeah. I think both of them are doing they're well. Very pretty girls. So let's pull out that Mojave double head girl, Chad. So we want to get Mojave into the project. There's only one minute left, by the way. Okay, so we'll finish on that one. Oh, that one goes in the middle. That one's in the middle. There we go. And this one. I can do that, good. Yeah, it's just heavy. It's down here, which is here. Okay. It's a male. Let's have a look at him. Now, this is a Mojave double pet. And I think he's put on a good size, Jared. Really pretty Mojave as well. And let's see what he weighs and whether we'll keep him for future breeding stock. He's 105. 105. Well, thank you, Jad, for that whistle tour on the snakes. Thank you also for taking care of Harry's Viv. And uh, thank you, everyone, for your love and support and supporting our channel. We're back into the video mode, so I'm back from holiday now. So we will be putting out more content. Thank you for your love and support, and we shall see you tomorrow. Bye for now.